what if the Nakubado came to me today and said, Help me to be president? I will tell you the truth. Which is the truth? The truth is, he can never be president. Nana Kufaru can never, never be, president. be president. Why? You see, to be a president, president, you must have certain one, structure, intelligence. These people take a certificate in university to be intelligent. No. You must have a wisdom. Hello, good evening. Sorry for the late start of the program. It happens when uh, there are elections. Uh, sorry about that. Tonight, we're going to talk to one of the important people who is going to lead us in a lesson in uh, numerology. Uh, but before then, we will walk you through what you've been hearing as a rumor mill. We will tell you um, about, in terms of the arrangements of the government, what's really happening, who and who are vying for what position, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Trade, Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Defense. As soon as the president-elect announced the team for the um, transition, many people associated some of those names with them. Those of you that you have heard their names, but you don't know who they are, we'll be telling you who they are on the touch screen. We'll put up their photographs and show you a bit of background about them, and also a bit of connection with the flag bearer. We'll also do something about the position of speaker, which is set to be announced and to be sworn in on the 6th of January, uh, actually, on the morning of the 7th of January, before the president-elect, Nana Kufado and his vice president-elect, Dr. Mahmoud Mahmoud Baumia, gets sworn in. So we'll talk about a bit of the speaker, give you a bit of history as well. Then we'll look at the ministerial positions and see who is gunning for what. I'm sure you would like to share in that gossip. It's all pure gossip, really, at this stage. But I'm sure you'd like to share in that gossip. And then after that, the Islamic cleric who correctly predicted the election in terms of even the percentages will join us. Now, we'll show you evidence of publications indicating that he had predicted the election a long time ago before the elections actually occurred. We'll show you some of those pictures. And then we'll talk to him. He's going to take us through a lesson of numerology. Uh, he, he, has, he says something about numbers, indicates a few things. He has some predictions to make about the future as well. That should be interesting. So that's an interesting good evening, Ghana. Starting very, very late today with the biggest of apologies. We'll be right back after the break. Stay tuned. We'll share the gossip of the ministers and what's happening inside the president-elect's kitchen cabinet. And then we'll go to the Islamic uh, cleric. So tell your friend to tell his friends. And you, we are, you are welcome on Good Evening Ghana official Facebook to tell us your views about what we are saying to you. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to the studio, and thank you very much for your time. You see that I'm going through a few documents here right now. Uh, as I said, later tonight, we will be going on a touch screen to enjoy the rumors about who is going to be who. We will start with the position of the Speaker of Parliament, and then we will go to the, um, that for Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Defense, National Security Interior, and all of those matters will be part of our program tonight. Now, though, I bring you, uh, I, I present to you the Islamic um, uh, cleric, uh, who is also a numerologist and a philosopher. And by reason of his numerology and philosophy, as well as his uh, Islamic cleric learnings, he has been able to predict some of the major political events in the West African sub-region. We know that during the American election, there was a professor who used mathematical analysis to predict that Donald Trump was going to win the election, and he actually did. Uh, we also have our own professor here. Um, he has predicted correctly some of the results, and I'm going to read this to you. Now, this publication is on the Ghana web, I believe, yes. and it reads, a Cleric predicts victory for NPP and Muhammadu Buhari. This document was published on the 16th of March 2015, nearly a year and a half ago, and it's as follows. Follows, sorry. Malam Shamunza, Shamuna Uzdaz Jibril, the man who is credited with many predictions which attributes to God and through his powers, has predicted a massive victory for General Muhammad Buhari in the forthcoming polls in Nigeria. In the same vein, he said a spiritual calculation also puts the new patriotic party ahead of the National Democratic Congress should an election be held in 2016. In the case of the Nigerian polls, he said in his latest release on the politics in both Africa's most populous nation, points out that Buhari's All People's Congress will register a marvelous performance in the forthcoming polls. 
The APC, he said, will win in Lagos State by 53%, in Kano State by 70%, in Bono State by 87%, in Yola and Adamawa States by 85%, in Katsina State and Delta State by 55 and 35% respectively. The, the prophecy here is that Muhammad Buhari will win Kano by 70%. I don't credit it with much um, uh, Malam Shamuza because... Um, Kanu State is a stronghold of Muhammad Buhari, so he was going to win anyway. But this one, this other publication, I'm going to talk to him soon. He's in a studio with us. You'll be seeing him soon. Uh, this one is 27 September 2016 and is on Ghana Web. This is a Ghana Web story of 27 September 2016. And it says, Mahama will pull 44.96% in December pools, says Islamic cleric. The story begins with a photograph of President Mahama, and the text reads as follows. So if you go to Ghana Web now, and you enter into September 2016, the title of the um, story is Mahama will pull 44.96% in the December pools. The story reads as follows. An Islamic cleric, numerologist, and philosopher, Sheikh Uza Sham Una Jibril, says President John Dramani Mahama will pull 44.96% in the upcoming elections. That percentage, he said, will result in John Mahama not retaining the presidency after comparing him with former President Goodluck Jonathan. President Mahama of the NDC has a lot of serious political similarities with Goodluck Jonathan of Nigeria, and the two parties, that's the PDP and the NDC, also have things in common, and that the reason for describing them as political Siamese twins, he said in a statement on Peace FM Online. The details are below. Welcome to our studios, Thank you very much. Um, Malam. Now, first of all, tell us, by what numerology um, context did you arrive at your predictions that have turned out to be particularly correct? I asked my producer to check the actual percentage of President Mahama. I know it's 44 point something, but you said 96. We'll check what the Electoral Commission has published, and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. But really, you are right. You said 44. No one could think. When you called me and said 44, I laughed at you. But tell us, how did you arrive at that? I was Billahi Samuel Alim. Mina Shaitan Rajim Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'a bi sani lahimidin. Good evening, Paul, and good evening to the viewers and the workers and whosoever is going to listen to us. Uh, thank you very much, Paul. As you are seeing me, my name is Ustaz Shamuna Jibril and I'm the Hafiz of the Holy Quran. I commit the Quran to memory without a teacher. And then I'm from Boku Central, where uh, as Ayariga, that's our MP. Uh, I that use Mahama the Quran. Mama Mahama Ayariga. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in, in his town, Boku, yeah. Boku Central. So I use the Quran in my calculation. You know, the Holy Quran, which seems to have uh, uh, verses of 6,666, to some school of thought. That's the whole version of the Holy Quran. And then the chapters of the Quran is 114. So whatever thing you are thinking of, or uh, uh, what, whatever thing you are thinking of on this earth is in the Quran, it's written in the Quran. So the 2016 election is in the Quran. The 2017 election and whatever activities. So I'm using the Holy Quran to calculate. So it's through the Holy Quran that I use uh, I'm having some data that, you know, that is a spiritual data. The 30 minutes is very scanty for us to explain that one. So I'll take the name, in summary, I'll take the name of the candidate, uh, President Jomama, Nanado, the party, and then I'll take the number of, uh, what do you call it, the number of voters, the total number of voters cast as provided by the Electoral Commission. Then I'll take the year, I'll take the month, and the actual date of the election. Then I'll put it in the Islamic, uh, what do you call it, data. Then I'll do all the collation, the subtraction, addition, multiplication, and whatever. Then I'll come out with the final results. And then there's no time for me to explain all these and stuff. Well, but we need to understand it because your explanation has to be credible so that it's not as if... Because you're not the only one who said Akufado was going to win. I had Bishop Oso Benpa in the studio who said Akufado was going to win, as a matter of fact. Uh, he said it in January, that Nana Akufado needed to do some things to win. But if he did those things, he'll win. And then he came to the studio again in uh, November and said the proviso that he gave in January uh, has been attained. And therefore, Nana Kufado was certain to win the elections. 
he said that. No, he okay. is quite different from this. You know, this this with figure, he didn't give any accuracy like figure. No, he didn't. He, he didn't. He didn't say yes. He didn't say the percentage. <laughs> yeah, no. But he said he will win a first round victory. But still, let's get to yours. So, so you said the date of the election, seven December was the date of the election. Yes. You said the names of the parties. N the names of the political. Uh, now the names of the political parties are in words. They are not in arithmetic. Yes. You know. So how do you draw yeah, them into arithmetic? Then, then we we'll, we'll convert it. Some, something like uh, when you look at my other prediction when I talk about MPP on the ballot five five. Mm -hmm. I explained that one, and I said that because of the letter E, elephants start with the letter E. So mm -hmm. when you take the E, then you convert it into figures, you get it five, A, B, C, D, E. In the year so, 2000, MPP were not fit on the ballot, they won the election. No, that, that, that one is, that one, I didn't make any calculation on that. that, that so but I you are saying that every, so are you saying that the, the model for the calculation is different from every year? Even if it's the no, same it, it MPP. Varies, it varies. Even if it's the same MPP and the same NDC. Yes, even if it is the same, it varies. It, so it, if NDC were fit on the ballot, would they have won the election? Like they, they fit on the ballot five? five? Yes, yes. Yeah, they, they would have NDC. won the Yes, NDC. Even uh, any party at all. On the so ballot whoever was five. going to be fit would have won the election? Regardless of the... Uh, what if Park was Hindu was fit, he win the election? Even as I go, when, when, when he's fit on the ballot five, I'm, I'm struggling to believe that. No, no, you know... Because those of us who don't use your spiritual calculation, just by looking at the situation, you're more likely to predict that because of these factors in political science, in sociology, in culture, the MPP will be ahead of the NDC. No, you know, uh, what I'm saying, this is quite different from psychology. Uh, excuse me to say, tw uh, 2014, uh, what do you call World Cup, you see that uh, Brazil is a very serious thing. When they say that they will score Brazil 7 one you know that you never understand. But I talk about it, they will score based on the categories they met, uh, what do you call Germany. I talk about it. So, it you doesn't... Brazil, Germany will be, uh, Brazil will be beaten heavily. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> is there You said 7. Yeah, yeah. 7-1 is there, and, uh, and I even talk about uh, what do you call it? Thomas Muller who score a hat rate, and Nima will do this, all these same stuff. It's on BBC, CNN, uh, all the international channels. So it doesn't matter, no matter the strength of the party or whether the party is weak. So no, all it human matter. activities is subject to this calculation? It's subject to the calculations. Whether you like it or not? <laughs> no, that's how it is. So we don't have to pray about it, you just have to wait. No, you know, as for prayers too, it's also it's, it's a con contributive factor. But as I'm saying that the calculation, it doesn't mean that the party is huge or the party is... Anyway, huge. Mahama ended up with 44.40 as the actual figure, yes. which is very close to your 44.9. But the 44% uh, is... Uh, but you didn't tell us what percentage Akufado will get. Oh, I, I told you. That it was what? 53.47%. <laughs> and I understand that. Me, I don't look at television. As mm. you see, me, I don't mm. look at television. I don't listen to radio. But you so understand that it came to what? You understand that the real figure was what? Uh, the real figure yeah, of Nanadu, 53.47%. Okay. And then somebody told me that there are four constituencies they were not collated before declaring the results. So if that... Uh, uh, if they, uh, they have added that resource, it, have, it would have been uh, accurate 53.47%. Uh, uh, mm. As a result of the four constituencies. So tell us uh, the numbers that you used. Yes. If the election was not fought on December 7th, and it was fought on November 7th, well, will the outcome have been different? No, it would have been totally different. Who would have won November 7th? They, they Assuming were, that all other things remain the same, okay. who would have won on November 7th? Like what? What, what are you trying Assuming to Assuming that the name of the party is NDC, the okay. candidate is Mr. Mahama, okay. they would have picked Ted on the ballot, okay. Akufado would pick Faith on the ballot. Assuming that all other factors were the same, okay. which party would have won on November 7th? No, like, uh, as I said, that the, uh, any part, the logo, where the logo is, that, that's, that's where the explanation is. So the logo fight determines the outcomes of the elections. No, you're, not, you're not getting my question. So no. you said that the date of the question, or the date of the event is important, 7th of December. The date. The date. So I'm asking you that if the uh, elections were fought on 7th of November, would the outcome be different? Uh, it would have been different. Mama would have won the election. That's Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Let me see what we have. Okay, so these are the, so you can see these are the final results of the election. Well, minus those, um, uh, minus those, um, Four constituencies. Yes. So Akufado is uh, President Mahama is forty-four point four zero. Can we can we see this? Yes. President Mahama is forty-four point four zero, and Nana Akufado is fifty-three point um, eight five. So that's that's what you get. Uh, that's what you get for the main election uh, after the coalition. But we think that there will be uh, some more uh, when the four constituencies come come in. That's what you have on your screen right there.
So why would President Mahama have won an election if it was fought on November the 7th? Yes, that one, we are not basing on the date of the election, we're based on the date of birth of mm -hmm. those political, uh, okay. of, of the candidates. Mm -hmm. So from my calculation, Mahama is November, and then so because of that, the election is fixed on November, definitely he will win the election. So that, that time, we are not going to base on the day and then the month and the year So Akufado is born in March. So any election fought in March, he will win? Definitely. He's having the upper hand. Really? But yes, but if... So if I am born in March and I'm going to contest elections in the university or something like that, and I have the power to con make the election be contestable in March, I should do that? No, you see, it, it based on the arrangement of the bylaw. Do you understand? Mm. March is uh, the third month of the, what do you call it? Yeah, of, of the, the year. year. So where it, where it happens that it corresponds with the date, it is third March or something like that. You see, when you, co when you collate and correspond with the month and then the date of the election, definitely you have... So you as a spiritualist, when you get this information, are you able to do something about it to change it? If yeah. I were President Mahama and you told me and I came to you and I said, look, Jibril, do something about this. Can you do something about it? Yeah, the Holy Quran told us that Yam Hullah Mayesha will you say between in the who umul kitab. The we can we we've we've chosen or we've designed something to a human, but it's ch it changes to change. That's what the Holy Quran told us. So if the Holy Quran told us uh, tell us that anything is subject to change, then if he comes I can do it and just turn out the So results. why didn't you do it for President Mahama? President Mahama didn't come to me. If he came, you would have changed it. <laughs> Why not? And you can change it. I'm not far from doing that. I'm a hacker in the spirit. A hacker in the spirit means what? You know, I hack this, as you read, the thing came before the, even the collated, the, the electoral commission. I hack in the data of the electoral commission before even the, what do you call, the whole uh, uh, voters list were compiled. I hacked in their data and saw what was going to happen. But their data is not spiritual data, it's physical data. Before anything happens, it happens in the spirit before it comes out. That's why I congratulated Nanadu. I, I went to his investiture in the spiritual realm and I saw everything. That's why I came out boldly and congratulated him. So everything that you are seeing, it happens in the what in the spirit before it comes out. So the, the, the spirit is most when we come back from the break, you tell us what will happen in the future. Okay. If you can tell us, because the next election will happen most likely November seventh. Okay. Maybe December 7th. We don't know, but most okay. likely November 7th. Okay. And the Nanado will be a candidate, uh, okay. hopefully. We don't know who else will be a candidate. But you tell us what happened in the future. Whether President Mahama, President Akufado's government will succeed. And uh, I'm going to be doing some predictions here. So maybe when you finish, you can tell me which of my predictions will come right. After the break, we'll get onto the touch screen and do the predictions of ministerial appointment and the speakership appointment. And then we'll talk to uh, Malam Jibril at the tail end of the program about the future, whether he has any predictions about the future. Good evening, Ghana Official on Facebook. It's the place to send your concern. Uh, I'll be right back after the break. Uh, stay tuned. Stay with us. Welcome back. Thank you very much. It's still good evening, Ghana. And uh, Sheikh Jibril has been telling us some interesting things. So he has something to say about how he thinks the administration of Akufuado will fare. He has something to say about whether President Mahama will be president of Ghana again. He has something to say about the future of the vice president. And he has something to say also about why certain people could not predict accurately. Uh, and here, in this year, he's predicted Trump. He's predicted correctly Yaya Jame. He's correctly predicted the Ghanaian election. Last year, he correctly predicted the Mohamed Buhari election. Now, my sports uh, editor is asking me to ask him to predict also in this studio whether the Black Stars will win the African Cup of Nations in Gabon. That's an interesting one. Um, so let's get on to the touch screen now. Now, we are talking about the office of speaker. So President-elect Akufuado is going to um, have an influence in um, naming who becomes Speaker of Parliament. There's been a particular tradition in Ghana about the Speakership of Parliament. Uh, so Ghana has had in the past, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight speakers. Uh, the first ever speaker we had was Charles Emmanuel Quist. Now, he was the speaker of, uh, so uh, is it too bled? Can our viewers, okay, it looks like our viewers can see. So this is Charles Emmanuel Quist. He was a speaker of the parliament of 1960. Now, in 1960, there was um, a, an election, and for the first time, Ghana had a president. Until then, Ghana had a prime minister, and the Queen of England was the president of Ghana, as it is now in England, it is in Canada, and it is also in Australia. But Ghana became a republic, and therefore we 
were our own presidency. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, who was prime minister, ascended to become the first president of the Republic of Ghana. And this man here, Mr. Charles Emmanuel Chris, was appointed as Speaker of Parliament. Of course, the government of Nkrumah was overthrown in 1966. And thereafter, there was another uh, constitution drawn, the Second Republican Constitution. And it was um, Justice uh, Niyama Olenu who became the Speaker of Parliament. Uh, let's see Niyama Olenu on the screen. Uh, these are very old photographs, so forgive us if uh, it looks uh, funny. But this is Justice Niyama Olenu, one of the finest legal brains of all time as far as the Ghana Bar Association is concerned. Niyama Olenu became the uh, Speaker of the Parliament of uh, 1969. Before long, that parliament was also overthrown in 1971 in a coup d'etat. The soldiers took over. They usually don't need speakers. They don't need speakers for anything because they carry their own legislature. They are their own legislature, their own judiciary, and their own executive. That's how military regimes rule. And they don't rule by acts of parliament, but they rule by decrees, which they pass without anyone's consent, just the council of the military leadership. So uh, after Nia Maolenu left, the military ruled, and then the military was also uh, gave way to elections in 1979. And guess who became speaker? Mr. Justice Griffith Randolph uh, became Speaker of the uh, Parliament. There is Griffith Randolph. Uh, he, incidentally, is also the father-in-law of the president-elect. So here is the president-elect's father-in-law. Griffith Randolph is the father of Mrs. Rebecca Akufuado, um, who, was Mrs. Rebe who was Rebecca Griffith Randolph. And uh, he was the Speaker of the Third Parliament of, uh, of Ghana. That was in 1979. So once again, the soldiers came, and so they ruled by decrees. And then we proceeded over to uh, 1992, uh, where we promulgated a new constitution. And guess who became Speaker of Parliament? Mr. Justice Daniel Francis Annan. D.F. Annan, another judge, judge of the Court of Appeal, became the Speaker of the Parliament. Uh, we'll have Justice Annan on the screen in a bit. A lot of you might remember him uh, from the PNDC era. So after Justice Anand, uh, then he ran through the two terms of the NDC administration. And next was uh, Mr. Do we have Justice Anand? It looks like we are struggling to put Justice Anand on. Let's do it very quickly. Yeah, Justice D.F. Anand, uh, the late Justice D.F. Anand was a speaker. So let's move on quickly then to Peter Ajete, because our narrative is already there. Uh, so after Justice Anand, then came Peter Ajete, uh, who was also the Speaker of Parliament under the MPP administration. After Peter Ajete, um, when the uh, came Bejina Sechi Hughes, the, the two term of the MPP administration had two speakers. So Peter Jete was the first, and Bejina Sechi Hughes was the next. Do we have Bejina Sechi Hughes? Yes, that is uh, 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 Bejina Sechi Hughes. So stop here. Now, up until Bejina Sechi Hughes, all the speakers had been uh, um, had been gas, gas from Accra. That has been the cultural tradition uh, because somehow Dr. Nkrumah felt that because the House of Parliament sat in Accra. Uh, the glorious seat of parliament must be allowed to be given to the guys. So, you, you, as I mentioned, from Quest, Niyama Olenu, Griffith Randolph, Peter, Justice D.F. Anand, Peter Ajete, up until Bejina Sechi Hughes, uh, who is a fanti, all the speakers were guns. Let's move on uh, to Mrs. Joyce Bamford Addo, uh, who was the speaker that Professor Mills appointed when he became president. Do we have Joyce Bamford Addo? Yes. Uh, she's quite recent, and so I'm sure you can you remember her. Judge Banfordado also uh, incidentally actually married to a Ga, uh, but half Ga as well, uh, was the Speaker of Parliament uh, for the time. She was the first woman, uh, uh, female speaker, and we, we duly applauded Professor Mills for taking that bold step. And after um, uh, uh, Mrs. Judge Banfordado came in the Mahama era, the Honorable Do Ajaho, who is currently. Uh, the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament, the Honorable Do Ajao. Uh, next, now, Nana Kufado has to appoint a speaker. So the concerns are that the people running for the speakership, Papa Usuan, Kumani, Ayukwe Utu, there's Professor Michael Kwe, who is the obvious front runner. Can we have Professor Michael Kwe? Michael Kwe is the obvious front runner for this job. And uh, the reason why Michael Kwe will make an excellent speaker is that he's the first speaker who brings to the table uh, two sets, two skill sets 
that are very necessary for the office of the speaker that we've never actually had combined in one person. So most of the speakers, in fact, all the speakers have been lawyers uh, because the legislature is a lawmaking institution and therefore uh, legal background is very important as a legislature uh, and also as a legislator for the members of parliament. But there's another background that has been missing from all the speakers that we had had, the background of political science. Because the legislature is an arm of government that operates in a political context. We've never had a speaker who has a background in both political science and law. And here is Professor Michael Quay, who presents that background in an expert way, because he's not just a, a celebrated performer uh, in advocacy as a lawyer, but Professor Michael Quay is also an ardent student of political science, rising to become the head of political science department at the University of Ghana, one of the most successful uh, head of uh, political science departments at the University of Ghana. So Professor Michael Quay, he comes from Accra. He's been a member of parliament. He's, he has a background in political science and law. Uh, he seems to have support within the New Patriotic Party because he has been secretary of the Greater Accra region of the New Patriotic Party. He's been constituency chairman of the Dominic Kwabinya constituency from 1992, and eventually he became the member of parliament for the Dominic Kwabinya constituency. This is the reason why everyone is celebrating what ex we expect to be an announcement very soon of a proposed speaker. Now, what will happen is that if Professor Michael Quay is proposed as speaker, on the morning of 7th January, and we will be covering that live for you, and I'm sure many stations will be, but what's going to technically happen is on the morning of 7th January, uh, the, on the midnight of 6th January, the life of this parliament is going to expire. The parliament that we now have, I, I've lost count. I think it's about the fifth parliament of the fourth republic, but you can correct me, I've just lost count. We can count it quickly, I'm sure we don't have time. But it's about the fifth or sixth parliament of the fourth republic. Now, its tenure is going to expire by law on the midnight of the 6th of January. So 12.01 on 6th of January, uh, there's no parliament. There's a bit of uh, emptiness there. There's no parliament until morning when those who have won the elections, as reported by the Electoral Commission to the clerk of parliament. So the Electoral Commission is going to write to the clerk of parliament and say that these are the 275 candidates for the election that are certified as winners and therefore members of parliament elect. The clerk is going to take that up and put them in parliament and give them some seats. So they will settle down and they'll be sworn in by the clerk of parliament on the morning of the 7th of January. After they have been sworn in by the clerk of parliament, the clerk will request the side of the majority to make a proposal for the name of the speaker of parliament. It is then that we expect that the majority leader, whoever he is, will announce the name of Professor Michael Quay and his curriculum beta and ask the parliament to vote upon him. And a vote will be taken by the members of parliament. And it is expected that usually when the majority proposes, the minority will not oppose the name of the speaker. It happened only in, the, um, in 2005 when the minority supported Peter Ajete, who was outgoing speaker. That's another story. But it's expected that uh, that will happen. And then when the speaker takes his seat, he will now organize uh, what has to be organized for the president's swearing in. Let's move to the office of the chief of staff. Now, that's also very important. Rumor is rife that um, the office of the chief of staff is going to Madame Fremont Paris. Uh, there's a competition between Madame Fremont Paris and Peter McMenu. Uh, oh, photograph is quite big. Can you do something about it? Okay, no, but uh, that's a half photograph of Madame Fremont Paris, one of the excellent women of the MPP. She was a deputy minister in the Kufa administration, and she held the Ayawaso West Wogan parliamentary constituency. That's the constituency that's kind of swing. Uh, it's now with the MPP, but uh, Fremont Paris held it for two terms after uh, the Honorable Amu had held it, Rebecca Adote had held it much earlier, Ken Jirasa had held it in 1992. Uh, it's the constituency that has the University of Ghana, East Legon, you know, that kind of place, North Legon, airport residential area, um, you know, a few nice places in that area, but you also have Bawaleshi, and you have the pass around the railway. It's a huge constituency. Fremont Parry used to be member of parliament for that constituency, so she has parliamentary experience. Uh, in that regard, as chief of staff, she'll be able to connect to the party because she's been an MP before. She's a huge party person. She also has experience as an international worker with the United Nations Development Program, the UNDP. So yes, she does have that experience. She's a woman, and uh, Nana Kufadro, I understand, is committed to having women in his cabinet and also committed to having a tribal balance in his cabinet. So chief of staff is a very important position. Chief of staff is like the prime minister, is the one who leads all the ministers and runs the show in the office of the president. Fremont Pari is competing with Peter McMahon with the party chairman. Uh, it's, it's difficult to see what McMahon will have over here at this stage. But Peter McMahon is also a very fine gentleman. He was campaign manager. He's been successful with the campaign. He was party chairman also before. So he has the party before. But McMahon has no parliamentary experience. 
And uh, Peter McMenu has also no experience in government. Uh, but he's also a very affable person, and people really like him. And he's, a, he's a, also the successful campaign manager. It's unlikely for our money that McMenu will be picked, but of course, these are rumors we don't know. We think, we think again that Fremont Parry will get a chief of staff job. Let's go to the Ministry of Finance. That's a very important one, and there's a lot of rumor about who becomes Ministry of Finance. From my experience, one of the key criteria to be Ministry of Finance is a good relationship, in fact, an excellent relationship with the president or the president-elect. Every president throughout the history of Ghana has actually had a finance minister who is particularly close to him. So we can look at the history. Kwame Nkrumah, he made his finance, he made Bedema his finance minister. Now, Afro Gwedema was the guy who organized people in central Accra to vote for Nkrumah even when Nkrumah was in prison. They were very, very close. When Nkrumah got out of prison and won the elections and became prime minister, he named Bedema as his finance minister. And Bedema was his finance minister for a long time. People began to think that Nkrumah's government was broken when Bedema left the government and left the country. It was then around 1962 that people thought that, look, if Bedema is gone, then Nkrumah is, is in real trouble because this was his best friend. Now, so Nkrumah made Bedema his finance minister. He fast forward to 1969. Prime Minister Buzia made J.H. Mensah his finance minister. In fact, Buzia and J.H. Mensah are sort of re actually related. You know, he made, he made J.H. Mensah his finance minister. So you can see that that was also a very tight one. When, when Dr. Liman became uh, 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 president, Professor Bene of the University of Ghana, who was his very close pal, at one time was his finance minister. And the fly left on Rollins, you had Chris Bocho, et cetera, et cetera. We are, look, we are waiting for the photographs of the uh, Ken Ophoyata and Anthony Akotoa said to have a look at that. So that's an important criteria. Uh, Mr. Kofo had uh, for later on Kojo Banredu, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So Nana Kufado is going to pick one who is very, very close to him. Anthony Akutho says seems to have the qualifications more than enough to be Minister of Finance. He was a Deputy Minister of Finance. Actually, he was Special Advisor to Yao Mafo. Then he became Deputy Minister of Finance. Then he became Minister of State at the Ministry of Finance. At the time, Kojo Banredu was Minister. When Kojo Banredu unfortunately passed, it was like Asukoto say, who stirred the ministry up until the MPP's defeat in 2008. He then took a seat in Parliament in Tafu as a member of Parliament uh, from the Ashanti region. He's a true and true MPP member. He was a very close uh, person to the Kufo group, but he had an excellent working relationship with Nana Kufado. Let's see the other candidate uh, for the Minister of Finance job. Ken Ophoyata is actually working at the transition team representing the government, uh, the government elect, if you like, on finance issues. Ken has a background uh, in finance. He has been the successful uh, head honcho at Data Bank, the financial services institution that's 20 years old, that has been particularly successful in the area of, of financing and issues like that, bonds, and, and, um, and they, are, they hold the EPAC, which is one of the best mutual funds. Uh, I think it was the first, actually, mutual fund introduced in Ghana, and EPAC became very successful. EPAC is now a very big portfolio. Uh, Ken is the, the brain behind Data Bank. He's also a significant shareholder in enterprise insurance, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Ken Oforata is a finance person through and through. He started from Archimota School, but he also studied at Columbia University in New York, one of the prestigious Ivy League universities. And then he had a master's uh, in business administration from Yale University. So Ken is also very qualified internationally. He's one of the cousins of the Akufuado regime. And Ken famously uh, retired from his job, I think, in 2008 or 2012, and announced that he was leaving Data Bank to support the Akufuado campaign. So in terms of who is close and very close to uh, the Akufuado enterprise, Ken Ophoyata will be ahead of Antonia Kutose. For that reason, our money for Minister of Finance is on Ken Ophoyata to become. Let's look at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the contest is between Isaac Osei and Madame Shelley Ayoko Boche. Do we have more time to go through all that? Okay. Uh, Isaac Osei and Madame Shelley Ayoko Boche. Um, so, Isaac Osei, uh, we have Shelley Ayoko Boche first. Okay. So, a bit of background about Shelley Ayoko Boche. Her last job in government was as Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs. And when she was Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado was the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Okay, uh, Shelley began her career in the Kufu administration, but her strongest claim to fame, I mean, if you look at her, she is a, a pretty affable lady. Her strongest claim to fame is that she, for many years, led one of the biggest constituencies 
in Wager. She was the member of parliament in Wager. It was a huge, it's still one of the biggest, even though it's been divided, but it was a huge constituency which had all the kind of demographics in there. You had not so rich people, rich people, you had criminals, all of that. Within the Wager constituency, you, could, you couldn't really imagine how such a lady was leading Wager and she won elections upon winning elections. Wager is always a flashpoint for violence and that kind of thing. Shelley held onto the constituency. She still does hold on to the constituency as the member of parliament for the area. I think that, I mean, she's done a very powerful job. It's a job that a lot of men cannot do. Holding Domi Kwabenya for three, uh, holding wager for three consecutive elections, I don't know whether I can do that job, but, but she's done it. So that's a strong claim to fame. Because of that, she's been very liked by the party. But she's had a close working relationship with the foreign ministry with Nana Akufuado. And in the days when the, the last days of Nana Akufuado at the foreign ministry, he was very busy because he was doing his foreign ministry work and also preparing for the party's primaries in December 2007 in Legon. It is believed that in his absence, just before he actually exited for the elections, Shelley must have done a lot of work uh, for the foreign ministry on his behalf. We are not so sure because we can't evaluate that. But the suspicion is that uh, the president-elect must have been very impressed with the work that Shelley did at the foreign ministry. Shelley actually has been nominated and is on the transition team on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Some party people are against the appointment of Shelley as Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, for whatever reason. And some party people support the Honorable Isaac Osei. Do you have his photograph now? Uh, the Honorable Isaac Osei to be Minister of Foreign Affairs. In terms of stature, really, uh, you will think that Isaac Osei carries the stature that is quite close to the stature of the president-elect himself when he was a minister of foreign affairs. Of course, uh, the president-elect was bilingual. Uh, essentially, he was a lawyer. He had worked in Europe. And so in terms of his capacity to deliver the foreign ministry, it was absolute. Uh, Isaac Osei comes close to that uh, because he had been the high commissioner in London and a particularly successful one. But Isaac Osei's real success story is when he became managing director of Cocoa Board. And it was under his watch that he moved the uh, cocoa production from 600 tons to 1 million tons for the first time in the history of Cocoa Board. Uh, Ghana produced 1 million tons of cocoa. It was under his watch that Ghana overtook Cote d'Ivoire as the world's leading producer of cocoa. So his real effort and, and glorious uh, image occurred at Cocoa Board. But in terms of his stature as an international diplomat, his background is trade, finance, and that kind of thing. As an international diplomat, really, Isaac Osei has the stature. It's difficult for us to pick up who will be foreign minister in this contest, in this regard, uh, it's, a kind of, it's a kind of contest that your heart is one way, your mind is one way. I mean, if you are like me, who is just uh, putting up lotto numbers because I don't have the power to do anything, uh, your heart is one way, your mind is one way. We'll call this an even. It's even. And uh, we will wait to see how it turns out so that we will see. But I think Shelly Ayokoboche will be in a slight lead as far as the relationship with the president-elect may be concerned as far as the foreign ministry is concerned. If we take the box of stature, we'll take Isaac Osei. But in terms of tenacity, the lady who has held the wager constituency is great. I don't know how her work is at the transition is planning. I will find out. But that will be uh, the foreign ministry. Is there any other ministry that we can go through? Uh, ministry of Trade. OK, we'll do that one. Then we we'll go back to uh, Malam Jibu because we don't have much time today. So on Thursday, we'll continue with this analysis because the game is not over yet at all. The lobbying is going on. People are trying to put their names in there. This morning, Anna Danko Akufado was at the uh, Dodowa uh, Gang Regional House of Chiefs. Tomorrow, he's with Asante Hine, and he's going around the country and thanking the chiefs. And the lobbying is intense, you know. OK, so let's look at, you don't have that Ministry of Trade, Alan Chematin, is what you must have. OK, yeah, that's Alan Chematin, who uh, we understand is uh, interested in his old job, the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Uh, we interviewed him before. We think that he's quite qualified for that job. At this job, I don't think that there's any competitor. So really, Alan Chamate will get it. Now let's go to Parliament and, and look at the analysis of the constitutional requirements of ministers from Parliament. Do you have that? Call them. They have 171 and 31, and they have some, some numbers. So we're going to show you what's going to happen in Parliament. It's a, if Akufuado is able to achieve what he here he wants to achieve, that he wants to have 60, 60 ministers and deputy ministers all around the country. The regular figure has been 80, 84, 85 since the Kufu administration, in fact, since the Rawlings administration. Actually, Rawlings was doing something like 70 something, Kufu increased it. Uh, so it was 80 something. Mahama tried, he couldn't. We are hearing that Nana Kufuado will have uh, 60 ministers. 
if he has 60 ministers and deputy ministers, it means that he would have to take 50% uh, plus one of that from parliament. So that means 31 ministers are going to come from parliament. The MPP has 170 members of parliament. That's a big deal. It's a real big deal. So he's going to choose 31. It could be more, but he's going to choose 31 at the constitutional requirement from parliament. So 31 out of 170. A lot of the MPP MPs are not going to get ministerial positions. So uh, they have 1,771. Okay. So the MPP has 171 seats. Uh, let's look at the next one. Hi. So you're going to have 31 in case the uh, MPP uh, president-elect decides to go for uh, the exact constitutional requirement, 31 of 60 ministers. If he's not able to get 60 ministers and he's going to get, uh, yeah, that's a figure, 31, and he's going to get 80 ministers, then he's going to pick 41. It's still quite a small number in terms of percentages from 171. So there's a lot, lot, lot members of parliament from the New Patriotic Party who will not become members of the executive. And we'll be having a look at this in great detail on Thursday. How is that going to pan out? Who is going to lose? Who is going to stand? I, it's, it's going to get very tough for the president-elect because he has to select these men from parliament and he has to select that tiny number from 171 list. And when MPs don't become members of the executive, there's a lot of agitation. Everyone says, I want a seat and I should have been in the government. And it's going to be very interesting in the few days as we pan out. So that's just a teaser for you. On Thursday, we'll get to some more uh, ministries as we find them. And so this evening, we've told you that Professor Michael Quay hopefully will be speaker. We think that on finance, Ken of Weata will get it. We think that foreign affairs is open. It's still tied in up there. We think that Alan Chamartin would be trade minister uh, uh, for the president-elect, and Anado Danko Akufado. Never forget Dr. Baumia is still in the, uh, he will also have a role to play in putting the list together. So that's it. We get off the touch screen and come to the final analysis with uh, Jibril. Yes, so what's going to happen in the future? What does the numbers show for the government? Would it be a successful government? Yeah, Mr. Paul, um, last, that was 2012, immediately after the election petition. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe you listen to me with Black Rasta on Heat FM. Yeah. I told him personally that the economy was going to have a very acute, serious problem. Mm -hmm. And then most especially the economy and then the, the energy. Mm -hmm. So I gave out a charity to the president. Mm -hmm. you, you listen to that program. I heard it, yes. Yes. And they failed to do it. And what happened in the end mm -hmm. is the same thing lying to Nanadu, I pity Nanadu. Say it again. So what's going to happen? The economy is going to be difficult. Very, very, no matter the amount of economies he has, even he should get the, the global economies, if he did not go by the charity. What's a charity? That's Sadaka. What's a Sadaka? It's like it's a spiritual arm giving. It's something, you Who know. Who should give the arms? The, the government should do it. The reason why is that during the elections, mm -hmm. the, the, there was a lot of spiritual activities. Mm -hmm. So if that spiritual activities, NDC did their spiritual activities to win, MPP also did, and the other parties. And definitely it's only one party that will win. So if it happens that the other party loses, then the heat of that spirit is going to be on the economy. Do, do you understand what the I'm saying? The heat of that spirit? Yes. The anger? The anger of the spirit for the party that loses it will affect, it will hit the economy. So that's the reason why. So, so I, what do they, Sadaka, how do they do it? How should they do it? Uh, the Sadaka, unless I, I, I do my calculation, but <laughs> I put in Anadu. You no put him? Yeah, I put in. I put in Anadu and the MPP. So what happened for It will take about three years before they can correct the economy. It's, it's spiritual. It's not physical. No matter okay. the amount of the intelligence. So, it will take three years before they can correct the economy. If they, they will go physical, they will not do the charity. If they do the charity, they will do it quickly. Uh, it will take about one and a half years, even. One and a half years. But yes. they can pray to God, Allah. They should do it. It won't work? <laughs> I said they should do it. <laughs> no, tell me, will it work or not? As for God, when you, when, you, when you say God, you finish everything. But per my calculation, you know, I calculated that they win. You, you understand? So it? in four years, will <laughs> they win again? Okay, the problem is that uh, the other time, uh, yesterday you asked me whether you be the f uh, you be a first term or second term. Yeah. His first term and second term will depend on President Buhari and uh, Donald Trump. If they win, he will win. If Buhari wins, Ronaldo will go for the second. Uh, he he also win. But if something happens somewhere along along the line with President Buhari, Ronaldo and uh, what do you call Donald Trump, then they are in trouble because they are triplets, spiritual Siamese twins. 
<laughs> That's interesting. So if Buhari decides that he's not running the next election. Nanado should forget he's not going for the second term. If Buhari goes for the second term and wins. He will win. If Trump goes for Trump will go for second term. If Trump <laughs> goes for second term and he wins. I'm saying it's it, are you not predicting or I'm no, predicting. asking you. Nah, okay. Trump and Nanado and Buhari, they are triplets, Siam, uh, spiritual Siamese twins. They are triplet. Do you understand? And it? Buhari's event always comes first. Yeah, it, it, because he, he can say. So whatever will affect Buhari will affect the other and vice versa. After if Buhari wins and Nanado wins, if Buhari wins and Trump wins and Nanado wins, after that, what will happen? No, I didn't go. I didn't you go that, that but far. But uh, spiritually now, provisionally, Mahama is now on scale. And he's, he's a different Mahama and a different NDC. Like he's on scale? Yeah, spiritually. I, I what, are, what does it mean to say on scale? He is now coming. He is now going to be the next candidate of the, uh, the, the NDC. Mahama will be the candidate? It's provisionally. Sp that's my spiritual provisional information. Okay. So I'll confirm it to you with time being. Okay. But what I'm telling about the, what do you call it, uh, Trump and Nanado, uh, do you understand? Do, do you know? Uh, so Mahama will be candidate again? Ma provisionally for now that's what that's what my calculation is and if he's candidate again his fortunes would depend on what happened in nigeria and the united states and, and, and the united states definitely so will jonathan be candidate again in nigeria no never but you said jonathan and mahama too were siamese twins depending when when mama when mama he didn't ask me will he be a candidate when mama be a mm. candidate if mama definitely be a candidate he'll also be a candidate no jonathan will come first Jonathan. Yes, good luck Jonathan in Nigeria. Yes. His events will happen first. Now what I'm trying to what I'm trying to put across is that the fortunes of Nanadu will be will depend on Buhari's own. Do, do you understand it? Mm. Yes, they are spiritual triplet they are to me. And but Buhari has run a very difficult economy for one year. Nigerians are not happy with it. Is that what's gonna happen here? That's what I'm telling you. But it's not physical. It's something spiritual. Let's say you see a pretty lady or a pretty girl without a husband. Everyone doesn't want. It's, there's something hanging. It's a serious thing I'm saying. If they think that I'm telling lies, they should go ahead. So they have to do Sadaka? They have to do it. I told uh, some time ago during the, uh, what do you, the AFCON, mm -hmm. I told Ghana will go to final with uh, Abidjan. Mm -hmm. But history would repeat itself. I gave out a charity. You, you heard it with Black Rasta, yeah. HFN. And they didn't do the charity, and what happened in the end? <laughs> so it's, a, it's something, it's not physical. You see, I know Baumia is good. I know they have uh, Nana Pune de Apriko, the economists. They are there in their numbers, I know. <laughs> but it's a different thing. It's not the we'll way come, have, uh, We'll deal more on that later on, uh, on our next program. But let's talk about the AFCON. We're going to win. No, I didn't do that calculation. Uh, oh, now, but it's only one month away, Rijibu, uh, you should have done that. No, no, no. It's no. A January. No, it's because of, uh, this, you know, that it, it was impromptu when you called me about yeah. this thing. What I just want to tell you is that next month I will give you details about the World Cup, the, the coming World Cup. I started that one. Who will win and who will We're going to qualify. Think, wh what? We're going to qualify. No, I'm still calculating. It's what are we qualifying? Yeah, yeah. It's in the pipeline. I'll just give Why you Why do you do these things? Is that your, is that your job? <laughs> Eh? Is that your job? I'm doing it for the people to know that there is something in the Holy Quran. So, do you have people who come to you to, for consultation? Yeah, both local and international. Do you charge them a lot of money? No, 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 I don't charge, I don't charge. It's free? Free and fair. I see. And do, 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 you know your, do you know your logo? Do you know your, what do you call it? We have what we call it. Do you know, every human being is having his, uh, what do you call it, uh, sampling. Do you know your sampling? Yes. Do you know your sampling? I know sampling, yes. So when I say, when I, do you know that this one is not your job? <laughs> Which one is not my job? This one. Oh, yeah, one you're me. a politician. You are not a journalist. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> politician so, is my job? Yes. Uh -huh. You know, in the spiritual ring, uh -huh. do you understand it? Uh -huh. It's quite different from psychology yeah. and what you are seeing. Yeah. <laughs> so, Shamima, do you know Shamima Musi? Yes, my Last friend. Last I came and told her that she are not a journalist. <laughs> she was annoyed. Where is Shamima now? Yeah, she, she's married. <laughs> So is she doing the journalism? In this election, she came to do a bit for City. No, I mean, as a job. No, no, she's not. I, I told her before. So you are not a journalist. A I'm politician. a politician. A serious one. When you indulge yourself in politics, you go ahead. Which party? Which party should I join? No, that one. There. I didn't calculate that one. Uh, do you know um, Kenneth Japon? 
the businessman or the, the businessman. politician? The businessman, yes. yes. Can I, do you, will you give me time to explain such things? No, you can't talk about him publicly. We can, no, 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 no. no. I'm just mm. citing an example about the political you, world, how it is. Yeah, tell no, me. It's not something bad. Okay, so what is it about him? You know, all the big men, all the big guys in the world, they belong to a certain realm in the spirit. In the do you spirit, understand yes. it? Yes, yes. They determine what is going to happen physically. Yeah. Uh, so that can adapt the point. You see the way I met him in the spirit. Mm. He's my client in the spiritual realm. Uh -huh. The way you see him, the way he's behaving, mm -hmm. I'm seeing him to be even quiet. In the spiritual, he's very stubborn. <laughs> so the politician or the businessman? The businessman. Uh, the, the politician, the politician businessman. The okay, Japan. okay, okay. Kenneth, so, the member of parliament. Yes, yeah. and uh, you know uh, this thing, Dangote. The Nigerian businessman. Yes. What has he done? He's very poor. The what money that he's having in the spiritual realm is. So if I see <laughs> when they are talking so about. So he should be having more money? Plenty. He's very, very poor. Really? Very poor. And President Mama. Yes. I have to, I have to congratulate Mama for what he told me. He assured me. He's also my client in the spiritual. He assured me of giving us a credible and peaceful election before the election. In the spiritual area. Yes, he's very humble. So Why do some pastors get these things wrong, and some spiritualists like you get it wrong? Like what? Like some spiritualists come and predict something and it doesn't happen. Predict that Hillary Clinton will win, doesn't win. Ah, uh, okay. You know that they are not hackers in the spirit. We are three at the moment. I'm not boosting. We are three hackers in the world. There's one in Niger. We call it. We call her Ina. Mm -hmm. She's from Tamari Set. You know Tamari Set. No. Then there's she one. Uses, where? She uses the okay. part. Th then there's one where. Th there's one in Shanghai. But all so these I, things. I'm, is I'm it not, is it uh, not? Excuse me. Uh -huh. She uses the pri private part. So when you go to her, she doesn't know. You. When she opens, you see Metro TV. You see your house. Everything. You just be seeing it. If something is missing, you see it. The time that the person was taking the thing, so she's a hacker in the spirit, but in a different direction. And then there's one to ensure. Before Allah and so God, that is, one, this not, to, is this not evil? Is it not evil? Is this no, th that one is definitely All the hackers things, is no, not evil? No, I'm using the Holy Quran. And the one in Shanghai is a, uh, is a Buddhist. He uses the Buddhist Bible? Yes. So if you are not a hacker and you predict, you have to forward the documents to the hackers. You yeah, understand somebody like TV Joshua, uh, what do you call the other pastor? Osuben, as for Osuben, is good. He's good. He's good. He's good. A, yeah, yeah. He's a, in, the, in the spiritual world, he's a spirit himself. Osuben is a spirit himself. In the spiritual realm. In the spiritual realm. Yes, it's not even fiscal that. He's a principality yeah, he's, for yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, he's good. But only that the problem. Am I is also that good in the spirit? <laughs> I'm coming. Only that uh, he doesn't. He's, he, uh, he can't. He can't calculate with figures. You see. So but, but he's good. Uh, you know him in the spirit. Yeah, yeah, I know he's good, he's good. Have you seen me in the spirit also before? Yeah, I saw you. I, I knew you before I came here. In the spirit? Yeah, I knew What was I doing in the spirit? <laughs> yeah, a politician. Yeah, po so when I see you doing all this, I feel you. Just please quit from here. And go and it. We'll have to end the program now <laughs> at uh, all the time. Let me check. Oh, wow, we've done so much. Uh, 10, 25. Uh, he'll be here with us again on Thursday. Can you make time on Thursday so we explain a few more things? Yeah, the, the Thursday I want to talk about the World Cup. The World Cup. Oh, you'd be happy to talk about the World Cup on Thursday. Maybe the after. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm calculating about the World Cup. OK. I, I want to give you the table mm. of the World Cup. OK. What is going to happen. What's going to the happen. Way we'll we'll going write to it down. The tables. Thank you, Jibril. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. OK, thank you. But you are also a politician in the spirit. No, I'm not a you. politician in the spirit. Viewers, thanks for watching. Good evening. And I'll be back on Thursday with another edition. This is Paul Adobashi wrapping up from uh, 17 Josiah Tongogara Street in Laboni. Good night.